Hi, it's Karen at the Cool Tool Studio. Today we're going to be making this lovely ring using a snap setting in EZ960. This project is great if you're just getting started in metal clay because we're not going to be using a lot of tools. Here's what you need for this project. A work surface, a snake maker, a scalpel, some tweezers, and precision hole punches. Sanding pads, clay thickness rolling frames, and EZ960 lump and syringe clay. A wick away with a brush, some tough cards, cool slip, a silicone ring mandrel, and a 5mm snap setting and corresponding stone. I'm going to start this project off by creating a little patty to set the snap setting into, and that will allow me to have some clay to join the setting to my ring band with. So, I've got a thickness frame here, and there's these little um, kind of embeddables on the bottom here, and they are about as tall as the four cards thickness. So you would know that you need something at least that thick. I'm gonna go up to six cards thickness, so I have two cards of wiggle room for my clay to shrink. So I'm just gonna take a little piece of clay, and I'm gonna flatten it out with my snake maker. And then I've got the precision hole punch here. I'm just gonna prep it with a little bit of cool slip. And I'm cutting through there to get that nice little disc. I'm gonna set it onto a tough card. And then I'm gonna take my snap setting and push it down into this patty. And I'm not trying to push all the way down because I don't want it to kind of break through the bottom there. I'm going to rotate it and push on this side a little bit. And basically just try to get it centered in there. And then once it's dry, you can come in with a little bit of syringe and cover up any holes that might have been made from displacing the clay when you pushed the setting down in. While my setting is off on a hot plate drying, I'm going to start making my ring bands. So I'm going to be working with a silicone ring mandrel. And I love these because they have some give and squish, and it's really easy to work directly on them and to pull your rings off without them breaking. But when you are making your ring, make sure that you give yourself a little bit of extra material so that it shrinks to the mandrel and not kind of into the mandrel because then when you go to pull it off it will be a little too tight and it could break and also you'll end up making your rings a size smaller than you intend to. So give yourself some room to shrink. With that in mind, let's make our rings. I'm going to be making three bands separately because I found when I tried to wrap the coil three times around and cut it and line everything up it got kind of messy. So we're just going to make three rings individually and then stack them up to join them. I'm going to start with a six, and I'm just going back and forth and applying some pressure gently down. And already I can tell I've got plenty of clay here for my ring band. And then I'm going to move my way down to a four, because that's the thickness I actually want for my ring bands. I'm going to trim a little off really quickly here so things don't get too out of control on me. And same process, just some gentle downward pressure with a continuous back and forth motion. And I didn't prep my work surface or my snake maker with cool slip for this. Kind of creeping towards the top there. Scoot them down. Alright, once you're happy with your coil, I like to take a tough card 
and then I'm going to work with my mandrel facing down on the tough card. And as I said before, I'm going to wrap this gently with some room. That way there's some space for this to shrink to the mandrel. So it's kind of close on that side. So on this side, I'm going to see about oh, dropping my coil. <laughs> I'm going to see about giving myself some room. And that will just allow my snake to shrink to the mandrel. And then I'm just cutting on this back side here, straight down. And then I'll use a brush to remove this excess guy down here. And then to join those two ends. And I'm kind of using a little bit of force with my brush here to go back and forth and sort of blend things. So we will have an opportunity later on to either cut our seams where we put our setting or hide them with a band. So you don't have to really lose your mind. You just want to make sure that it's going to be joined so that you have a nice circle shape to work with. I'm going to set this on the hot plate to dry and I'm going to repeat this two more times. So I have three ring bands to work with. So while my rings are drying, I'm going to take a look at my setting and on the inside there, you can see how the tabs kind of displace some of the clay and they're visible. Um, if that doesn't bother you, that's fine, but I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of fill those areas with a little bit of syringe. And then also on the outside, if there's any gap on your setting that is exposed, you can fill that with syringe as well. So just a teeny tiny dab will do this. And then I'm just going to use my damp brush again to kind of smooth it out. And this is just, like I said, I'm being kind of finicky, but I want it to look nice and clean. So once those gaps are filled, I'm going to take an ultra fine sanding pad and just kind of work on this outside edge here and kind of give myself a straight up and down wall to work with. Um, it is okay if you have a little bit of a prong exposed. Um, just keep it in mind when you're going to go add your band. You can hide it with your band there if you don't feel like filling it with syringe because we will have the opportunity to hide it. So I'm just making sure my wall is nice and straight up and down and that will help me put my setting levelly on my ring when I'm joining them together. Make sure you leave yourself a little bit of clay because you do want to have a lip there to be able to join to your ring. And once you're happy with the shape of this, we'll start working on our ring again. So this is the last ring that I made and it's dry. And you can see how it just pops off the eight and a half there. And I'm going to put them back on and there's his seam. And I'm going to line up the other ring bands and put the seams in the same spot because I'm going to cut those out and not really spend a lot of the time that I would have to to really perfect them and hide them. So, so I'm lining those seams up and then I'm just going to be using water to join all three of these ring bands. I'm just kind of making sure I get it in between the bands. And just kind of rotating and working my way around here. And I'm being very liberal with the water. I'm not gonna have too much. And then once I've gone all the way around, I'm again going to make sure my seams are in the same kind of area. And then I'm going to set it down again. And then just kind of use the brush to gently scoot and nudge 
So we're resting against that tough card again. And that just helps to make sure that that bottom ring is gonna be nice and level. So I'm applying a little bit of pressure to push everybody down for a nice strong join. So now I'm gonna put this off to the hot plate and allow it to dry. So now that these three bands have dried and joined into one band, I'm gonna use a precision hole punch to punch a hole for this setting to set into. So we need to decide what size precision hole punch we're gonna use. I have the pink one here and my setting fits into it. So I know that this would actually end up being a little too big. So I'm going to go down to the next smallest, which is the size four. And you want it to be around like the outside diameter of the punch to be around the outside diameter of your setting. And this is a little small, but I think it'll end up working out because you can always sand if you need to. So I still have my rings on my mandrel for support and I'm scooting them up some and I'm gonna take my hole punch and again, there are those seams that I joined that I'm just gonna now cut out and no one will ever know that they were there. So I'm trying to center the punch on the three bands and then I'm pushing down some and rotating. And it should just kind of cut right through and pop. Got one side there. So again, I'm just kind of twisting. All right. So it pulled apart a little bit there, but that's fine. I'm gonna be adding water again when I'm putting my setting in. And it looks like a little more material came off down there, but we can probably fix that with syringe. So I'm going to dampen the bands again there where it kind of popped out. So I can apply some pressure and join those back. And then on either side as well. So now I'm gonna take my setting and again, if you had a spot like I did where the little prong is exposed, make sure you're gonna be tucking that in a side against the band. And also make sure you're paying attention to the orientation of your prongs. We're gonna want the prongs oriented in a north, south, east, west arrangement. So I'm just kind of setting it in at this point. And again, I'm gonna come back with some water and we'll come back to do any fills and fixes with syringe once we just have a general join. All right, so that looks pretty good. And we're just gonna allow this to dry before we come back and fill any gaps that we may have. So now that this piece is dried and the setting is joined to the ring band here, I'm gonna come and do some correctional work with syringe. My precision hole punch wasn't super sharp, so you can see that there's this place where instead of cutting, it kind of broke. So that's not a problem because we're just gonna fill it with some syringe. I'm gonna start off by dampening the area on either side there. And I'm also gonna take this opportunity to look at the inside of my band and add some syringe there as needed as well. So I'm gonna come in with my syringe here. And kind of with the smallest tip on the syringe here, fill that space. And then I'm just gonna take my damp brush and kind of smooth that out. See already, pretty sneaky fix. I can't really tell that there was a hole there. Once this dries, you can sand it and clean it up further. But I think that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna repeat that on this side here. Just a dab. And I'm kind of working it back and forth to blend there. And that looks much better. So now I'm gonna go on to the inside here. And just to really support this connection, I'm gonna run a thin line of syringe. It's 
it's kind of hard to see. If I angle it like that, you can see that there's some syringe now that I'm going to be blending back and forth to join my band to my setting and make it a little more seamless. You want it to be nice and comfortable for the wearer. Right, so I'm going to flip it back over again. Just make sure that these two little fillings look good. And we're going to allow this to dry and then do some final sanding work. Once your syringe work has dried, take this opportunity to do some cleanup. I'm going to be working with the ultra fine and micro fine sanding pad and just kind of cleaning up those areas where the piece was joined. I'm going to use the ultra fine if there's any kind of excess material to be removed. And then you'll use the microfine to just clean up and make surfaces nice and smooth. So I'm going to spend some time sanding both the outside of my ring and the inside there. And then we'll add those fun decorative bands. My ring is sanded and I'm ready to add my decorative bands. So I'm just going to move my sandings off to the side here. And don't forget to save all of your clay because you can scrape this together and reconstitute it. And I love the black tough cards because it makes it really visible how much you're saving. So before you make your bands, it's good to mark where you want to have them. I just used a pencil here and measured. You can use a divider or whatever you'd like to mark where your bands are going to lay. To make these bands, I'm going to be rolling another coil. I'm going to be rolling to four cards thickness. Just grabbing a little bit of clay. I've got my snake maker again. And then since these bands are kind of half round, they're, they're sort of flat, I'm going to a three card thickness. Let's kind of straighten this out again. And then just pushing down. And that gives me more of a flat coil than a round one. I'm going to sneak them off. And then I've got my ring. And I'm working off of the mandrel because it's nice to have access to this edge over here. I'm just dampening where the coil is going to go. And just draping the coil over. I'm lining it up the edge with my graphite line there. I'm kind of gently applying some pressure with my finger to round it out there. And then I'm just going to come in with my scalpel and cut off the excess at the bottom there. So now I'm going to come back in with my dampened brush and just kind of round that out. And applying some pressure there. Let's just make that a nice, smooth, comfortable transition. All right. Kind of check it to make sure it's still nice and straight up and down and it hasn't scooted to an angle. You can nudge it around still some. And then once you're happy with it, repeat this process on the other side. While those bands are drying, we're going to make the little decorative elements that lay on top of the bands. And they're just these tiny little dots. And usually when I make dots, I like to work with our finishing touches molds, but these are even smaller than that. So I found the quickest way to make tiny dots is to take your syringe, and I've got the smallest blue colored tip on it again. And sometimes it takes some figuring out to kind of get the weight of this right and the pressure of it right. But you're just pushing out a teeny bit at a time and pulling straight up. So there's a little bit of dry syringe on my tip there. So I'm just going to knock that off and try again. And you're just kind of pushing down to get it to stick and then pulling straight up. It's like I was a little big, but as I said, it kind of takes a minute to get your hands Figure it out there, that guy's perfect. And 
and they can be a little irregular. I usually make a lot of them all at once and then kind of go back through and pick out the ones that are the most similar size and kind of sort them for use on different projects. That guy kind of fought me a little bit for sticking. So once you have some dots made, sometimes there's a little bit of a kind of point on them from pulling away. And I just take a damp brush and just kind of pat them all just to knock that down. And once these are attached to our piece, you can sand them and fix them as well. I just like to touch them up at this point too. So this guy was kind of awkward, but we'll see if we can make him work. Yeah, he'll be okay. So now I'm going to put these on the hot plate and once they're dry, they'll just pop right off. So I have some dots that are dry that I've picked out and I'm ready to join them to my bands. But first I'm just going to give my bands a really quick sanding. Again, to kind of smooth out this bottom edge here. And then just give them a nice surface to stick to. All right. So I'm going to dampen the top surface there. And then just pick up little dots with my tweezers. Once you're happy with where one is, I like to use the back end of my tweezer and I'm supporting my ring on my finger to apply a little bit of pressure. So my band's getting kind of dry. I'm going to add a little more water. And place another dot. I'm just kind of using the tip of the tweezer to nudge it around until I like where it is. And then again, using this back end to apply pressure. I'm going to keep repeating this until I have three dots on both of my little decorative bands here. Once you have all your dots placed, I like to come in with just a little bit of water, once again, on top of the dots and the band to solidify that connection. So now I'm going to place this piece on my hot plate to dry again and we'll do a final sanding before firing. So now I'm just going to briefly sand the surface of the dots here. And that'll just take down any points that you may have missed with your water. And I also just kind of come on the side and round them out some too. Since I worked with Easy 960, I fired these rings at 1675 for two hours. If you want to assure the size of your ring, you can place it on a ring pellet when you're firing it. Once your ring is fired, you can shine it up. I used a tumbler to do so. I also darkened low areas with our liver of sulfur gel, and that just kind of adds some contrast to your piece. So now you're ready to set your stone. I've found that the best way to do this is to set your stone with the flat face against a nice hard surface, and then to have the collet pointing up. So then I'm gonna take the snap setting and again, I'm going to be supporting my ring with my finger on the inside. And I'm lining it up with my stone. It's kind of hard to see with my fingers in the way. But basically, you just want to make sure the stone is in the center there with a prong on the outside edges. So now I'm going to take my ring and apply some direct pressure straight down. Did you hear that little snap? Just like that, your stone is set. Take some time to check it over and make sure that it looks like your stone is seated well into the setting. I think this looks really good. Snap settings are a great way to add stones to your piece, especially if they can't be fired in place. They're really simple and they look great. I hope you give them and this ring project a try. Thanks for watching. Visit our learning center at cooltools.us for more cool jewelry making videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, 
follow us on Twitter, and be sure to sign up for our email list to be the first to hear about new videos, new products, and other cool stuff from Cool Tools.